Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everyone. It's Kago coming at you with another video. So today, and following in turn with what we sort of went over with the mage, and sort of just really in my guild, just some mages PM me and saying the gear guide helped them so much. Um, we're going to continue doing that. So I figured next one up would be my other alt, and that is a uh, Shadow Priest. Now, when we look at Shadow Priest gear, um, they actually have a very, very, very similar gearing to a Warlock. So, might as well cover both of those at once. Two birds with one stone. So, when we um, come to it, we'll just start right off and get right into it. And this gearing is pretty unique because a lot of it can actually just be tailored up which is pretty exciting. And it, whether it's the best or not, it's very, very close to a viable alternative. The first one where that is true is the headpiece. Now, as a Shadow Priest or a Warlock, you're going to want to first off get a Fell Cloth Hood. You can get this at level 53. It's 10 int and 30 spell power. As you can see, I made this myself on my mage, which is pretty awesome. Um, the other alternative is going to be the fell um, hat from uh, Strathome here off of the um, Magistrate Barathus right here. Crimson felt hat. Same stuff. Um, it just has two less int. Um, it is usable at level 54. Um, this does count for all spells, so maybe a Warlock might want to lean towards that more because they do use Emulate and other um, abilities. They're not as shadow, they're not pure shadow damage, so just something to consider with that. Um, next, we have Neck Pieces. Now, this one is the Dark Advisor's Pendant. Now, for Shadow Priest, absolutely 100% go with this. Um, we get 10% hit in our talent tree, which is pretty insane. I know Warlocks do not. Um, it's right here with Shadow Focus, which is pretty awesome. Um, so you actually don't need hit built into your build as a Shadow Priest, whereas a um, Warlock needs it desperately. So as a, you, this can be an option for Warlock to grab, but first starting off, you're going to want to go with Star of Mysteria because it has that 1% hit and that is huge for any warlock early on. The next we have Fellcloth Shoulders. Um, this is going to be what you go for um, for, every, for Shadow Priest and Warlock. Increases Shadow Spells by 28 or uh, 26 damage. Um, that's definitely going to be what you start off and go for until you get all the way into um, rating BWL. For Warlock, you're going to want to look into the Nemesis shoulders. Um, that's your tier 2 shoulder piece. Um, those are really, really good. Um, later on, once you start rating, I forgot to go over that for the helm, um, is going to be uh, Mishandres from um, Blackwing Lair. This is just the best helm upgrade, so you literally skip right to this. Warlocks and Shadow Priest are going to want this. This is just an insane one. Um, before that, as a Warlock, you can actually go with your Tier 2 helmet. That is really good. It drops off of Anixia. Um, it gives 32 spell power as well as 4 health per 5 seconds and just a lot of stamina. In. It's a great piece. Um, for Warlocks to grab. Here's that helmet. Nemesis skull cap right there. So every lock's going to want that. As a priest, you can't use that, and our tier sucks. So we don't really get the... Um, we're not really privy to that, which kind of sucks for us. Um, also, to mention this, um, just covering all these, the PvP set for a Shadow Priest is insane. If you're really trying to be the best... You're going to want to go for rank 13 and get all that gear. It has tons of spell power, tons of mana per 5 on it. It is the best set overall. Um, and the Warlock tier gear is pretty good as well. They have the optional um, using the PvP gear. Um, specifically, the Warlord shoulders. Those give you a lot of stam and, and 25 damage, um, which I would put above the Nemesis ones unless you have your 3 set for Nemesis, which is pretty uh, good. For them, it gives them 23 uh, spell power. <clears throat> so that covers the shoulders, necks. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is the MC necks are the same for you um, when you are 
grinding uh you can upgrade a choke of enlightenment but i would really it's not better than the dark advisors pendant from scolo i have a whole video on how to get the dark advisors pendant it's a long quest chain it's uh, called the dawn's gambit um so you can check that out if you'd like and are more interested in doing that but the best one we can get is choker of the fire lord 34 spell power this is insane for everyone you're going to be using this for a very very long time so this brings us to capes um this might shock you but i actually have the amplifying coke on my priest and not my mage whereas i have the um Saphirin cape is the um, one you want to really look towards. Um, you can also buy just pure shadow damage green BOEs if you want to do that. You can get plus 21. That's something you can consider. As a shadow priest, it really helps. I'd love to get the uh, cape here on my priest, but if I can't get it, then it is what it is. I have no control over that. Um, so we just keep grinding, and hopefully we'll get it one day. And then next, um, the next upgrade is going to be the Neff Cape. This is best for all casters, Shadow Priest, Warlock. Just all of you are going to want to use this. It's a great, amazing cape. Now, we get to the chest piece. Now, this is super um, interesting. So, Warlocks, you're going to want your Robe of the Void. Um, Shadow Priests use Robe of Winter Night, which gives you Shadow and Frost, plus 40. Um, optional is Raw robe of volatile power now warlock can use this is pretty good um and then if warlocks are lacking hit they actually can use their tier one chest piece which is pretty uh, unique shadow priests aren't going to be privy to that shadow priests literally use robe of the winter night for a very very long time um and then the best for a warlock is definitely your tier two chest piece from nefarian right here your nemesis robes as i mentioned priest tier doesn't become that good for a while um there's really no shadow tier for us um it's all itemized for healing as of now so those are the chest pieces you can get next we're gonna have the wrists um right now you see i have plus 20 uh shadow damage racers plus 21 would be max roll but i happen to get these and i don't feel like spending hundreds of gold um to sort of upgrade them to plus 21 um but other than that you can get um mini bracers here in back blackwing lair there are a lot of bracers that can drop that are um uh comparable uh such as there are um 22 spell power ones from being exalted with warsong gulch that's something to look into if you're using these green ones and you're into pvp um, the best ones for Warlocks are going to either be the Bracers of Arcane Accuracy, which drop off of Flame Maw here. I actually got those on my Mage uh, last raid, which was super, super hype. Or actually, sorry, it drops off of Broodlord. My bad about that. Right there are those Bracers. Um, and then we have the Nemesis Bracers, which drop off of Razor Gore. These are really good for uh, um, Warlocks, especially trying to manage your tier sets. And having that awesome stam in and 15 spell power. So those are the options for warlocks as well as shadow priests. Um, like I said, a lot of this cast gear, it's pretty straightforward on what is the best item um, to get. It's like so so like similar, um, other than the warlocks having tier options opposed to shadow priests not having anything. So next we come to gloves. Um, one of the best pieces that you're going to use for a long time are the felt cloth gloves. You can craft these. Um, you just got to find a tailor with demonic runes. As you can see, they're made by my mage. So I pretty much, I literally made one, two, uh, three, four pieces, or five, five with these flare core leggings. Five pieces of my this are just crafted from a tailor. So if you can find a tailor with all of them, or if you have a tailor with all of them, the patterns aren't that hard. I'd probably say the felt cloth gloves and the flare core leggings are the hardest two to get. Uh, Robe of Winter Night is pretty tough too. That farm took me 20 hours and about 500 kills, and it's a bop one. But the felt cloth shoulders and hood aren't that bad to get. Um. Anyway, enough ranting about that. Um. After you, you can go and get the Hands of Power, but fail cloth gloves you can just buy off the auction house. They usually run about 100 gold nowadays. Um, 
Warlocks have the option of using their Nemesis gloves. Now, these are interesting because they give them 1% crit. Um, they do drop off of Ebon Rock, Flame Maw, and uh, Flame Gore. All the gloves drop off of each of these dragons. So they're pretty interesting for sure. Um, and then you can get Hands of Power from Lubers, but I'd say Felcloth Gloves all the way. It gives you an additional um, 7 spell power. But the best gloves you're going to find are off of Ebon Rock. We have the Ebony Flame Gloves, 43 spell power um, for shadow damage. This is insane. Warlocks and Shadow Priest alike are going to be after these. They're some of the best um, for them. Next, we have the Belt um, piece for Warlocks, Shadow Priests. Um, this is pretty interesting because Warlocks are going to want their Nemesis Belt. 100% drops off of uh, Val. It has 25 magic damage and 1% crit. It's really nice for them. They can start pumping with that. Then we have many options here for a uh, Shadow Priest. Um, I actually like Fire Maw's Clutch for the mana per 5 and the 35 spell power. Because this is a very Shadow Priest item for the mana. Because mana is our biggest thing. Like, we can get tons of spell power, but if we start to lose out on mana, like, I have to use so many major mana pots and as much MP5 to not go oom in a fight. It's kind of insane. Um, especially as fights get longer and stuff, that mana per 5. I'd recommend Fire Miles Clutch. Now, the options that you can also look for are Angelista's Grasp. Now, this is a belt that drops off of Chromagus. It has 2% hit. Now, for that's an option to look at sort of for a Warlock, Mage. Anyone can play around with this. I just don't see it as being viable because of Mana Igniting Cord and MC, for Mages at least. Um, it's a pretty insane belt. It just gives you 2% crit, um, and it can drop off of um, Gar, Baring Getting, Golemeg, and Magmadar. Oh, it gives you 1% crit and 25 spell power. Sorry about that. Um, but it's pretty much the same as the Nemesis belt, so locks have that option. Um, and then if they need the hit, they can look into that. Then also another option in MMC is Stash of Whispered Secrets. This has 33 spell power and 6 health per 5. Drops off a major domo. Um, this belt drops pretty often, um, but just something to look at for your options. You have a lot of options for belts. And then, of course, Bangflock, Sash, if you are a Warlock, a Shadow Priest doesn't really need that too much at all but that drops off of um the ogre boss in black rock depths it is ogathar the breaker right there um next we have legs um you're gonna want to go with the flare core leggings as a shadow priest um as a warlock you definitely have the option of your nemesis legs if you don't really get much and then to start off, if you don't buy Flare Core or make them, they're pretty expensive right now because they just came out. You have the Sky Shroud Leggings, which drop from Lower Black Rock Spire. They drop off of High Lord Omafek um, right here. Sky Shroud Leggings. So pretty awesome to get if you don't have money to craft these. And then I'd be amiss to not tell you about the best in slot ones for the entire pretty much expansion. I think you maybe replace these at next, but it's going to be the um, they it's going to be the fell infused leggings that drop off of Lord Kazik here, right there. Fell infused leggings, sixty four shadow damage. They're they're insane. One of the best items that drop off of this guy um, pretty much in the game. Um, if you're able to sort of compete for the world boss and fight for it, I would recommend uh, getting those. If not, then it kind of sucks. But um, as Phase 4 rolls out and the dragons come out, you'll have, I'd imagine the other ones are going to be a bit less camped. So you'll have a higher opportunity to get those uh, leggings. The next we have boots. Now the best boots that you're gonna want to get right off the bat are uh, Malachi's foot wraps. These give you um, 27 shadow spell power. You're gonna use these for a very long time. I'm still using mine now, as you can see. They drop off 
in Strathholm off of Malachi the Placid um, right there. They're pretty fair drop. It took me like three or four tries to get them, I believe. Um, and then other than that, you're pretty much going to be using those. Um, you do have the option of Omnicast Boots if, you're really, if you really want to get those. I wouldn't recommend getting them because they don't drop that often. Or they drop that often, but you have the option of just better shoes here as a warlock or shadow priest. Now we have, um, a, I'd be amiss to not tell you this one as well, but we have some really good boots here that drop off of a Zergos. Um, they are the Snowblind Shoes. They have that mana per five, which is much, much needed for a Shadow Priest, as well as the 32 um, spell power. Then Warlocks can get their Nemesis Boots. Um, it just gives them a nice uh, 23 spell power, but it's, it's essential for making their set bonus, which will help them a lot. It drops off of the Broodlord Lasher. Um, right here are those. So Warlocks have a lot of options with their Tier 2. Because if they get the full 8 set, they can reduce their threat generated by uh, 20%. As well as their pet gains 20 stamina and magic resist. Like, it turns their pet into a freaking like tank almost. Um, next, we have rings. Which, this is pretty interesting. Because as a Shadow Priest, I actually went for the Ring of Blackrock. Um, the mana per 5 is pretty nice. And the 19 spell power. Um, when we come into Warlocks, you get the... Band of Dark Dominion, Band of Focus Concentration, and Ring of Spell Power for your best rings. Um, while you're gearing up to start off, you can go with the Underworld Bands, which is a level 38, 14 shadow damage, or Band of the Unicorn, which is 13 spell damage. And then you absolutely want to get your Eye of Orgrimmar from Saving Princess. And then you can buy a Maiden Circle, but I would probably go with Underworld Band because those are pretty cheap and you can get them at level 38. Um, so if you're twinking at level 39, definitely snag some uh, Underworld Bands for yourself. Um, but when we come into BWL, we can see these rings here. Um, Ring of the Black Rock it drops off of Flame Mob, Ebon Rock, and Flame Gore. Pretty nice. Gives you 19 spell power, the mana. That's what I'm using. Um, you have the chance for the Band of Focus Concentration, which is insane. Hit increased by 1%. And 21 spell damage. Um, everyone's going to use this because that hit is super important. Shadow Priest, like I said, you can get away with it. But it's still 21 spell power. So that would be an upgrade. And you can never complain about having some free hit on your uh, stuff. The next we have uh, the Ring of Spell Power. Which is if you're going pure spell power, you're going to want this. Drops off of Lucifron, Gehenna's. Shazeroth and Sulfuron, 33 spell power. They're just insane. And you can even use two of them. So, um, I forgot to mention for us the... I mentioned it, but I did not show you. Off of the trash, the Band of the Dark Dominion gives you 33 um, shadow damage. It's kind of nuts. Um, it's really, really good for any shadow caster. I'll probably go with Dark Dominion and the Spring of Black Rock while my MP5 is still quite low. The next we have the um, trinkets. Now warlocks can actually get their dire mall trinket. Um, it yields. It's the royal seal of Elder Thalos. It yields twenty three spell power. It's pretty freaking nice. Um, you pair that with a briarwood reed, you'll be pumping. Um, but you really want to look at these. Um, the Netherons tier from Nefarian. This one's just insane. Sought after by literally everyone. Forty three. Four magic damage, 2% spell hit. There's nothing like it. Um, and then we have from Molten Core, as well as the uh, Toep Telespan of Imperial Power. This can drop off of Baron, Magmadar, Gar, and Golemeg. It's insane. I have it on my mage. I love it. Um, your class trinket isn't that good for a warlock, as well as a shadow priest. Um, and Priest 1 is purely healing, so we don't even get that option. I would, I really would love to replace Eye of Beast. Um, it, crit isn't that good on Shadow Priest, because we pretty much use Mind Flay, Pain, and Mind Blast. It can really only hit on Mind Blast for a crit, so you just want as much Shadow Power as possible, and just go straight for it. Um, but, I would, if, um, 
You can get a Mind Tap Talisman for mana for five, or you can get a Shard of Scale from Anixia. I would actually use Shard of Scale if I can get it for my Eye of the Beast, just because that mana for five is so nice for a Shadow Priest. Um, it's just really, really good. Like, uh, I don't know how else to put it that way. Um, but anyway, we come to our final slots and this is going to be weapons um for wands you want skulls ghastly touch if you can get it a draw it's a rare drop off of skull within strathholm um there's a rare spawn that is that one 14 shadow damage it's the best that you can get you can get uh wands that are 13 shadow damage those just sell for a lot and then if you fail to get all those, you can go with the Bone Creeper Stylus, which drops from Skullamance off of the last boss right there. It gives you 11 spell power, so that's a pretty nice one. And then as a priest, there is a unique one here, the Essence Gatherer, which drops off of Blackwing Lair. Um, if you're really just lacking with... Uh, mana per five and you could really use this wand go with it. It gives you five uh, mana per five I actually use this while raiding just because I want to uh, keep that going and make it nice and good For my shadow priest just so I don't oom all the time Next we have weapon so as a priest you can get anathema benediction you get that by getting an eye of shadow which drops off of Lord Kha'zix or just elite demons that are level 60. Um, I actually have a video farming the Eye of Shadow. I literally got it on my first kill, which was incredibly uh, nuts. Um, and a really nice farm for me to that regards. But you get the Eye of Shadow and you get you kill Major Domo, who drops either the uh, Leaf for a bow quest or he drops the Eye of Divinity, which you combine with the Eye of Shadow. Then you have to do a really crazy healing quest out in Eastern Plague Lands. It's actually pretty challenging. It took me like four or five tries to get it. Um, I did get, um, sort of, I guess, ganked by a guildy. He came out to try to help me, and he didn't know that if he comes out to help me, it makes me fail. So that was unfortunate. But, you know, I it was a fun thing. I actually found it to be like challenging and that was really nice for a change to be sort of challenged by something so uh really like old like 15 years ago so it was nice to uh like actually fail at doing stuff in the game with that quest line but anyway as a warlock um or a priest beforehand a shadow priest can actually has this option as well from baron rivendire you can get the scepter of the unholy giving you 19 uh shadow spell power um, as an offhand, you're going to want to get exalted with Altric Valley and get the Tome of the uh, Shadow Force, which gives you 34 shadow damage. Um, an option to that is getting the Neph Head. It'll give you 14 int and 28 uh, spell power as an offhand. That's just something to consider. Um, but the best weapon for a Warlock is 100% going to be Staff of Shadow Flame. It is insane gives you uh, 2 crit, 84, uh, a 2% crit, 84 spell power. But before you get that staff, um, obviously you can get your tier 14 uh, weapons, the High Warlord, Spellblade, um, Claw of Cromagus, uh, Fang of the Mystic off of um, Azurgos. But there is a dagger that you can get just from farming dungeons. It's in Direwall West. It's off of Immelthar. It is the Blade of the New Moon. This is a pretty rare drop. I didn't see it often. Uh, priests can use this as well, but I find the mace off of Strath drops way more than this blade. Um, that's just from personal experience. However, both are really, really nice. Um, until you get your Anathema as a Shadow Priest, but as a Warlock, you're going to be rocking that blade for a long time. Uh, but you can definitely get Exalted with AV. Um, before that and there are options for boes that of the shadow wrath and the spirit of aquaminus quest line which is a pain in the butt but it is a 20 spell power offhand so guys that pretty much does it for the shadow priest warlock gearing guide uh, those are most of the locations if i missed any i'm sorry it's hard to uh, sort of go over everything especially covering two classes and try my best to remember it all and sort of just give you the best information that i can Anyway, guys, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. I'm trying to get these down and explain them as fast as I possibly can, but gearing from fresh 60 to current,
current and all the options there are just so many things in this game that you have to cover with these videos but i really really hope that covering this as a uh, shadow priest and warlock guide will help any of you new warlocks out there so thank you guys very much and i hope you have a fantastic day i'll see you next time Bye bye